Do you ever feel like the moment you decide to go on a diet, the whole world seems to be conspiring against you to break it? Isn't it weird that exactly the moment that you decide to stop ordering out or eating the office sweets, there seems to be a nonstop supply of them? Well, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. That has actually been happening the whole time. This whole time, there has been a nonstop supply of takeout and sweets in your environment. It's just now you're hyper fixated on them because you're trying not to have them. Hey, I'm Heather. I'm a nurse practitioner. I personally lost 80 pounds without meds or surgery, and I am here to encourage you to make good choices and build habits so that you too can lose weight and keep it off. Most of us are constantly bombarded by a stream of fattening foods nearly daily. It is only when we are actively trying to avoid them that we even notice how frequently we are offered junk food. A huge hurdle you must overcome if you want to have any chance of losing and maintaining your weight loss is consistently saying no to that onslaught of junk food that I have no doubt is constantly presenting itself to you one way or the other. Now, my friends, that may mean, and I know this is sacrilege to some of you, but that may mean turning down free food. Like, all the time. Now I know the horror who would even think of such a thing, especially right now, food is super expensive. And if somebody wants to give it to you, it seems foolish not to have it. But if that food is going to derail you and is outside of your plan, you know, how free is it? There is a cost to it. Think about it. How many times have you eaten a bagel or a donut that you otherwise wouldn't have just because it was free and offered to you? How many times have you eaten kind of a not so healthy takeout lunch because it was offered to you for free, even though you packed your own healthy lunch and it was sitting in the refrigerator? free seems to have this draw to us. We just hate the idea that something could be given to us and we don't partake in it. But if we stop and think about it just for a minute, most people with a job can afford to eat a donut every day if they wanted to or a bagel every day if they wanted to. We don't because we know it's not healthy for us. Why on earth Would we make an unhealthy choice just because it didn't cost us anything? And it's crazy. Afterwards, people are like, man, what was I supposed to do? It's free. Like, (laughs) that's some sort of, you know, obvious issue that you have, right? It's free. What was I supposed to do? They were just giving it to me. I had to eat it. If somebody offered you $3 a day to poison yourself, would you do it? The problem is this stuff adds up over time. And... When it comes to following our plan, I think it's so much better to be intentional when we choose to have something that's off plan or that we know is maybe not in line with our health goals. So having a free donut that you didn't even get to pick the flavor be the thing that you have that's off plan as opposed to something that you really want and choose to have and have it at the right time and place. It's just a much better strategy than whenever the junk is put in front of you, you have it just because you don't have to pay for it. You know, you don't have to pay for it with your cash, but you are having to pay for it with your health. So isn't it better to pick something that you really want? And what if you don't work outside of the home? You got any tempting foods inside your house? Are they already there? You ever calculated the odds that you're not going to have those tempting foods after an incredibly long, hard day and the fairy tale that is willpower has deserted you? Because I'll tell you what my odds are if that stuff is in my house and I'm home all day. There's zero, right? I might be an angel before lunchtime hits, but my piety disappears at lunchtime, especially if I've done anything kind of overwhelming or stressful and it's ready to make some food decisions. Basically, I know that once junk food hits my house, one way or another, eventually it's going to be going into my body unless it goes into somebody else's. If it's still here and I'm having a rough day, I'm having it. It's a, it's a foregone conclusion. So I like to say that my decision to eat garbage food is made at the grocery store because once it hits that cart and once it hits my pantry, forget it, it's done. I mean, it might not be immediate. I might be able to hold strong for a little while, but eventually the stress is going to hit. I'm going to get the case of the efforts and that food is going in my body.
Now you might be completely different. You might not be tempted by foods like that, in which case your weight loss journey is going to be a total piece of cake that you are not tempted by, that you can just walk on by and good for you. But for the rest of us humans that struggle with our weight because we have a difficult time with some foods, it is much easier to create an environment that does not have them in it nonstop. The problem, of course, is sometimes that food did not make its way into your house because you got it. A lot of us live with other people and they brought that food into our house. So whether it be free food at work or tempting food at home, the issue is oftentimes other people are making that decision to put that food in your way. You might be doing your very best to only buy healthy foods, to pack your lunch, to not swing through drive through but the world has other plans for you. You are constantly going to have temptations in front of you, whether it's work, whether it's home. I literally had a box of mini cakes mailed to me this week. <laughs> You know, I came home for lunch. I was starving. There was a package outside my door. It was little cakes, little chocolate covered cakes. You guys, they're coming for you. <laughs> the world is full of junk. People have no qualms offering it to you. And so you need to come up with a strategy to deal with having food constantly offered to you food that is maybe not on plan. So when it comes to food at work, it needs to be a no. If it is not something that is on your plan, you just need to say no, no matter how free it is and how frequent it is. In fact, if it is free and frequent, it's probably part of the problem that got you to where you are in the first place. <laughs> if, you know, free food at work is something that is just something you're used to, chances are it's not the healthiest and it is working against you and not for you. When it comes to food at home, I do hear a lot of people say, I can't get rid of that food in my house because of my partner or because of my children. Naturally, I have a lot of opinions about both. First of all, when it comes to your partner, that's a conversation that y'all need to have, right? If this is a huge deal to you, if you are prioritizing your health, then someone who loves you should be willing to kind of compromise with you. Even if they're not willing to not have those things in the house, surely they could be kept somewhere else out of sight of you and out of temptation zone. And if you plead your case and they still aren't willing to budge and basically tell you that, you know, your priorities and your focus on your health is not important enough for them to not have those foods in their house. Well, you know, I've been single for a year and a half now and it's, it's not that bad. <laughs> just saying, just throwing that out there. As for people who tell me that they have to keep a certain amount of junk food in their house because of their children, honestly, I cannot tell you how much this makes me want to bang my head against the wall as a healthcare provider. If there are foods that you know are unhealthy and you know you have a difficult time with, but you don't feel like you can keep them out of your house because you need them to be there for your children, I want you to stop for a second and think about that and whether your children should be eating that food. Aren't we supposed to be modeling healthy behaviors for our children? And chances are, if it's not good for us, it's not good for them either. So many of us have to overcome the unfortunate food environment that we were raised in that probably got us to the unhealthy place that we got to. No disrespect to our parents and no blame, but we certainly don't want to repeat that cycle. Once we recognize, hey, this food environment is not great, it didn't get me to a great place, I need to change it for myself, then you would be doing your children a huge favor if you change that food environment for them as well. Are they going to get mouthy? Yes, they are. They are going to get mouthy. So whether it's at work, whether it's at home, whether it's just in your regular day-to-day -day life, somehow that food train is going to keep on rolling in. You are always going to be offered food that is not on plan. Even if you tell people, look, I'm trying not to eat sweets. I'm trying not to eat takeout. They won't stop offering it to you. It's almost like a compulsion in our society, in our culture, in every culture really that I'm aware of. Food is a big part of it. And showing people that you care about them is 
offering them food. Here we are in the holidays and everyone is baking. Everyone is spreading good cheer, which means sharing food. It's tough. These are difficult hurdles. Honestly, I personally could not be more obnoxious than I already am about how I don't want people to give me refined carbohydrates. I am so mouthy about it, you guys. But guess what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. People that work with me every day who hear me harping on it still offer me candy. And I'm still told about, you know, the pasta lunch that's available in the break room that a drug rep brought or whatever. It's constant and it's persistent. The part that makes me the craziest is if I had a problem with alcohol and everyone knew it, I am fairly certain these same people would not be offering me shots or, you know, glasses of wine or whatever. You don't give somebody that you know has an alcohol problem a cheer basket for Christmas, right? People don't do that. But people that struggle with their weight aren't excluded from being given baked goods and cookies and things like that. And I get why. I don't think that everyone that has a weight problem should be given the treats. Obviously, like that would be, you know, nasty and hateful in our culture. So that is not what I'm proposing. I'm just saying that if you politely say, look, I'm really struggling with my weight or that's that's a food that's really problematic for me, you know, thanks but no thanks, there's going to be pushback. There often is. I think people don't ever think of food as being harmful or problematic, right? Because the dose makes the poison. Plus, everyone has the mindset, well, just just this once, just this once won't, you know, be that big of a deal. This one time. But if this one time is most of the time, then that's part of the problem. That's why you get stuck where you are. Because everybody's constantly pushing on you on this one time. And it's lots and lots of times. <laughs> I have a two-part strategy when I'm dealing with being offered food that is not on plan for me. I politely say no thank you once or twice. And if that doesn't work, I kindly accept it. And then I throw it in the trash. It sounds wasteful, but that food was going somewhere once it was offered to me, right? It was already in existence. It's not like I can turn it back into its components. I can't get those eggs back out of there and eat them separately because those are on my plan. Once it exists, it exists. So it's going in me or it's going in the trash can. And I certainly don't want to be the trash can. So it's going into the actual trash can. And, you know, some people say, oh, take it home to your kids. But as mentioned, I don't particularly want my kids to have a just this one time, all the time food because they're getting that their own just this once at school and at friends' houses. It's constant. And so if we constantly say yes, then we are constantly going to have a problem with our health. What I truly hope that you don't choose, what I beg of you is do not poison yourself out of politeness, right? Just because it's offered to you, just because somebody spent their time, the gift was received. That person thought of you and you received that. Like, thank you for thinking of me. If somebody buys you a book that you don't want to read, do you feel guilty for not reading it? No, you're grateful to receive the, the gift and then you pay it forward or you donate it. You do something with it. But if it's not interesting to you, you're not going to spend 10, 15 hours reading the thing just so as not to hurt someone's feelings. And the same can be said for any kind of gift. You receive the gift, but just because it was given to you doesn't mean that you have to make use of it. We get gifts all the time that are maybe not suited for us. Now, I'm not saying that everything that comes your way is not worth it or you want to say no to. There might be some things, especially around the holidays, that you look forward to every year. You know somebody can cook that one special thing and by gone it, like you get it once a year and you're having it. I personally have a very dear friend who makes homemade caramels. They're amazing. They're magical. There is absolutely no way on God's great earth that I'm not going to have some if they're given to me this year. That's happening. But in order for me to feel okay about that decision, I'm going to need to say no to a whole lot of things that are going to be kind of flowing around so that I don't completely derail over the season and then spend the first quarter of next year trying to climb myself back out of the mess that I made of December. You really just need to be super intentional about it. You need to really think, hey, is this thing that I'm about to put in my mouth worth it? And if the answer is yes, 
and you're willing to kind of accept the consequences, fine, it's worth it. But if you're just having it because it's there, walk away. A lot of times, if you're not making progress on your weight loss journey, the environment and the people around you are a big part of that. They're contributory. I've spent a lot of time talking about our choices, our habits, our decisions, but a lot of times the people around us are making choices that make things more difficult for us. Because you might be a meal prepping, lunch packing, absolute on the ball guru, but you're still human. If your favorite food comes by you unexpectedly when you're hungry or under stress, you're going to have it. Having some kind of plans on what you're going to do and how you're going to handle it when you're offered things that aren't on plan needs to be part of your long-term strategy for weight loss or you're not going to lose weight because that nonstop onslaught of food tends not to be healthy, tends to add to our problem, and tends to keep us from achieving our goals. Y'all, in order to fight the good fight, you got to be willing to act differently. Not only differently than the way you acted before, but oftentimes differently than everyone else. Because as a whole, people are pretty unhealthy. You know, if you do what everybody else does, you're you're probably not going to end up in a good spot. I know, it's difficult. We're pack animals. We are coded to be part of a community. And a big part of that community for all of us is our food culture. We use it to celebrate. We use it to bond. It's something that we go out and do with our friends. It is a big part of how we live, believe me, (laughs) as someone who has been trying to eat differently for a good, good amount of time now, I realize how ingrained it is. I realize how difficult it is to kind of go against the grain and to swim upstream against everyone else. But if you're not willing to do that, the weight is likely going to stay. That is one of the choices that you have to make and, you know, live your life differently. Nothing changes if we change nothing. We must change how we deal with junk food that is constantly in front of us if we have any hopes to get to a healthier body. You must be willing to act differently if you want different results. Make good choices, everybody. Hey y'all, my name is Heather Shucker. I'm a nurse practitioner, which means I'm a healthcare provider, but I am not your healthcare provider. As such, if any of the information in my videos do not jive with what your provider has advised you, please take that into consideration as they know your health history and I do not.